All right. Hey, Bio. It's Mr. Jones. Mr. Hedjarian. We're back with our uh, excretory system lecture. So just to start off, we got just to kind of list some things that the excretory system includes, even though we might not really talk about them. Uh, first of all, the lungs. We breathe out CO2, so that's kind of like exc uh, excreting some cellular waste. That's a really straight line you just drew. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Not that one. Nope. One for two. Uh, sweat glands are another thing that's part of the excretory system in the sense that we release some salt and water from them as well. But we're going to focus on the kidneys and specifically the urinary system as our main uh, excretory system component. Um, and so there's a little reminder down here at the bottom that to remember that excretory system is about excreting waste from um, our cells. So waste that's produced by cells in our body, not waste that comes from our digestive system. Okay, those are two different things. And in fact, the digestive waste is not part of the excretory system. Uh, so here's sort of an overview of some of the main parts of the, the urinary system. You have your kidneys on either side connected to your blood supply. Here's your aorta and your vena cava. And your kidneys will produce some urine that will go down these tubes called ureters. Or do you pr pronounce it ureter? I go ureter okay. too. Some people yeah. say ureter. I've heard that. I've heard that as well. Yeah. So these ureters go down mm -hmm. to your bladder where the urine is stored. And eventually you excrete it out your urethra. It looks like an onion. The bladder does? Yeah. In this picture. Mm. In this picture, yeah. So can I live with one kidney only? Uh, yes, you can. It's not ideal, but you can. You can also donate a kidney to somebody who is a match. I would donate one totally to you if you needed one. Appreciate it. I don't yeah. know for a match, though. <laughs> All right, so here's some interesting facts. The average person urinates about 3,000 times per year. I've never counted. It's like 10 times a day? A little less than 10 times a day? Is that That's, right? No, I don't know. That sounds like a lot. It's like 8 times a day, maybe? Yeah. And the average person uh, poops about 305 pounds per year. But remember, these are two. Th this is the first one is excretory system. This is digestive system. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, here's what a kidney looks like. So we're gonna focus a little bit on nephrons later, which Mr. Jones will talk about. Uh, I really want to talk about the renal artery and the renal vein. Okay. So <clears throat> let's see. This red one right here, this one is the renal artery. So when you hear renal, I want you to think kidney. So blood, waste, and water basically go through the renal artery into your kidney. And then once things get filtered, they come out. So they exit out of your renal vein. So that blood would be sort of, you could say, clean yeah. at that point. Clean or filtered blood. Um, and then here's your ureter. So this is where water and sort of toxic waste or all that waste is going to exit your kidney through the ureter. And where is it going to go after there? Do you guys remember? It is your urinary bladder. And then how does it exit your urinary bladder? Through your urethra. And just a note, it's important to know that every 45 minutes or so, your entire blood volume is filtered by your kidneys. Okay, so here's another picture of uh, your renal artery, which we just talked about, renal vein, the ureter, and then you probably will remember these from the um, practicals or from our dissections. We talked about the cortex being sort of all of this and the medulla. It looks a little different in our uh, fetal pigs. It looks a little more whitish, would you say? Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's going to look different in real life, obviously. Yeah. So what we want you to know is when it comes to nephrons, and I think you'll talk more about that, mm. both of these contain nephrons. And we have something like a million or so nephrons. And I think you'll say more about that. Yeah, so this is what a nephron kind of looks like. Um, there's a lot of, there's some terms on here that I, were, for this class, if you take AP Bio, you'll go probably into more detail about this kind of stuff. But... Don't worry about learning these names for now because that's sort of the detail of the nephron itself. We just want to know in general that a nephron is the like the main functional unit of the kidney. 
its job is to filter the blood and create the, the waste that we, that we excrete as urine. So kind of like the alveoli and the villi were our functional units of some of our other systems, the respiratory and the digestive, the nephron's kind of like that unit in the kidney, in our excretory system. If you major in bio, though, in college, you will learn this stuff. Oh, yeah. At a very detailed level. Yep. But as for this class, here's what we should really know. Knowing the chief or the main functions of the nephron. So for starters, it regulates the concentration of water in our blood, meaning it will take out water if we have too much water in our blood. Or if we're dehydrated and we don't have enough water, the kidney will remove less water from our blood to keep us more hydrated. It also regulates the concentration of salts in our blood. So it'll again take out salt if we have too much and remove it. And ultimately, the nephron's job um, is to create urine, which is a combination of excess water and various salts. Um, and that is basically the product at the end of the filtration process of the kidney. Once it's gotten the right amount of water and salts removed, you have, you have your urine at the end of that. And so you have millions of nephrons in the kidney, all creating a little bit of urine that drain into this big area down here. And all that urine then, of course, goes to, to the ureter and to the bladder, and eventually you excrete it outside of your body. Okay. Talk all a little right. about what urine is. Yeah, so urine is made up of a lot of things. So it's mostly water. As you can see, it's 95% water, 2% urea, and then all of these other things. And some of them have to do with sort of the foods that you're eating. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of it has to do with uh, metabolism that's taking place in your body that's not... So that we want to make sure that we, we create this distinction between digestive and excretory. So remember, we are just talking about excretory here. Yeah. Okay, so regulation of kidney function. So kidneys play an important role when it comes to homeostasis. Make sure you know this. My lines are not as straight as yours today. I don't know what's going mm -hmm. on. Okay, so water content, salt and waste content, and pH. So remember, when, when it goes to uh, homeostasis, it's about creating that balance so that you don't have too much of something or too little of something. So your kidneys play a role in making sure that your the amount of water you have in your body is balanced. So if you have a lot of water, it's going to remove some of that water and it's basically going to become part of your urine or your pee. Uh, salt and waste content. So salty foods really play a role here, which we'll talk about later. And then the pH, actually, it's your pH is balanced basically by your kidneys. Mm -hmm. And then your blood volume and your blood pressure. So we are going to have a question later on um, mm. that we're going to ask you about this. Yeah. So I was thinking if you're, if you're thinking about like what you should know about the kidney's function, know about these four things as the main functions for the kidney. And you'll be pretty good to go. So a little checkpoint. All right. So if you are dehydrated, will your kidneys hold on to more or less water than usual? So go ahead and look in your skeleton notes and see if you can answer that question. If you need to pause the video, that's totally fine. And then I have a, what should we call it, a challenge question? It's a, are you paying attention? Are you paying attention? Are, are you, you watching? Are you watching or are you just looking at the PowerPoint yeah, or, or the just slides? just skipping around. Yeah, so here's your challenge question that we're not gonna pop up on, on here, so I'll read it out to you. Why is having too much salt in your diet related to high blood pressure? Again, that is, why is having too much salt in your diet related to having high blood pressure? That is your challenge question. We'd like for you to add it to the end of your skeleton notes and call it challenge question and answer it for us, please. All right. You can, that will probably be checked. You should check it. We'll check up there. Do you want to give the answer now or talk about it in class? I don't know. What do you want? Um, why, don't we, why don't we let them think about it? We can go over in class. Okay. Sounds Talk good. about in class. All right, so diuretics. Ooh, I like a lot of stuff on here that I enjoy. Oh, yes. The tea for me is the one that really? I probably drink the most. For me, coffee. Coffee? For sure, coffee. That's right, you're a coffee drinker. But I do like wine once in a while. Yeah, wine's good. So there's something called antidiuretic hormone, ADH, and this basically causes your kidneys to retain more water. Now, things like coffee and tea and alcohol, they are considered diuretics because they can, they block ADH. So go back to, again, what we talked about what ADH is. 
ADH, causes your kidneys to retain more water, diuretics block ADH, so less water is returned to your blood. So what does that mean? That means you're losing more water. So you pee more when you drink things like tea and coffee. So I know a lot of us drink tea because we want to hydrate, but it's important to also drink a lot of water if you're a tea drinker. Well, so the other thing to keep in mind though is if it's caffeinated or decaffeinated, because with tea and coffee, the diuretic is actually the caffeine, That's right. right? So if you have decaffeinated coffee or tea, it's going to be less. There's still some caffeine. So when you buy like decaffeinated coffee, there's still yeah. some caffeine in there, but the caffeine is the diuretic. I don't like decaf coffee at all. Huh? Okay. Decaf, I, I mean, decaf tea before you go to bed, good idea. Yeah, decaf coffee. People, a lot of people like decaf coffee. Really? Bed, though. Hmm. People like little I thought the whole point of coffee was to have the caffeine in it. Some people like the taste. Mm. A little uh, after dinner coffee. So yeah, so it's the caffeine part. So just keep that in mind. So if you drink a lot of coffee or a lot of tea or anything with caffeine, like energy drinks, you're gonna probably realize that you pee more than you're used to. And alcohol is also a diuretic. Yeah. So even if it's not if it's not wine, any alcohol will cause you to pee more because it blocks the ADH. That's right. All right, another checkpoint. So when people drink alcohol, do their kidneys retain more or less water? Think about how much you would pee, and that'll help you answer yeah. this question. Ooh, okay. This is a, a little test chart for yourself next time you go to the bathroom mm -hmm. to check, do you have healthy urine by looking at the color? So you have a scale of one to eight here, and you know, one being the most clear urine and eight being the darkest, most potentially cloudy and unhealthy urine. Eight doesn't look good. No, eight doesn't look good. One's what you're shooting for. Eight almost looks like digestive system waste. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> so what should you shoot for? One, two, or three, like they say here. You want to be in this zone right here. Now, good zone. yeah, this is a good zone. You, you want your pee to be pretty close to clear means you're hydrated enough. If it's over here at four, five, or six, you should drink more, a little more water. Seven, you need a lot more water. Eight, and there might be some kidney issues no going on with that. you. Might want to see a doctor. Yeah. One, that, two, three is a really zone dark. of healthy people. Yep. I was trying to come up with a better yeah, idea. Yeah. Yeah. That went, that didn't work out for you. <laughs> so this is like sort of what you want to think. And this is interesting here, so be aware. If you're taking vitamin supplements, some of your urine will look like this. I know that's true for me when I take like a vitamin pill. Mm -hmm. I'll get really, really bright, almost like neon yellow yeah. pee. Almost yeah. like I drank a highlighter or something sometimes. That's true. And that's also, just kind of a side note, some things could also kind of add a, add a smell, specific smell oh, to yeah, your asparagus, pee. Asparagus sure. is one of them. So if you like asparagus, you'll notice that you can smell it. Depends. So not everyone That's can smell right. it. There's a certain gene that makes you be able to smell it or not. So I have it. Me I too. Can smell it. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. I feel like we're getting personal with this. A little personal. Yeah. Well, it is personal. Let's like talking about bodily fluids. That's right. <laughs> so. Pathology. Pathology. So the word pathology, if you're not quite sure what that means, that means things that the study of diseases or disorders. Yep. Study of diseases. <clears throat> so what are some issues in the urinary system? First one are something called UTIs, which you may have heard of, or urinary tract infections. Uh, this is basically usually when you get a bacteria in your urinary tract yep. that causes a, um, an infection. We'll talk more about this in sex ed. Oh, we will indeed, yeah. And um, more. I want you to think about this one. I'm not going to give you the answer, but think about the anatomy of the male and the female excretory system. And that might help you answer the question of why UTIs are more common in women than they are in men. We'll talk about that in class two. Kidney stones, which we'll talk about in a second, or you, will, I think you'll take over for that mm -hmm. one. And then at the end, I'll talk a little bit about what happens if your kidneys fail. There's a couple options you have. One is called dialysis, and the other is a transplant, and I'll talk about those as well. And the reason why we have a couple of these uh, bolded is because that's those are the ones we're going to talk about. Yeah. So I'll let you get into a little bit of kidney stones. Kidney stones, all right. So... I remember in college I had a buddy who had kidney stones um, and at the time they were sort of small enough that he was told to basically just pee them out and painful. he said it was a very painful process because they can be sharp and they have edges. Yeah. 
it's I not the, the prettiest yeah. situation. You can also get sonar now. There are some situations where you can go to the doctor and they take um, a device that shoots like sonar, like sound waves, and that breaks up the kidney stone, and then you can pee it out easier. But I can imagine depends, being very painful. painful. I mean, you look at this one down here. That's got to squeeze through. Yeah, it's got to squeeze through, and there's friction going on. It can be pretty painful. Um, and basically, it has to do kind of with, with not necessarily exactly with what you're eating, but that could play a role. Yeah. Also, if how dehydrated. You need, if you're dehydrated a lot, your chances are much higher. Yeah. A high salt diet mm -hmm. doesn't help. Yeah. And there's also something called oxalates. That's right. That you're, if you eat too much like beets or spinach, things like that. I love beets. I know. I think it's, I don't know. If you have to eat, I think you have to eat a lot of it and also be yeah. dehydrated, but That's something right. to think about. That's right. Ooh, there's some pictures. Yeah, so there's a picture of an x-ray of what it looks like. Um, as you can see, it's sort of, there's an arrow pointing to it. And then there's a dissected kidney right there with kidney stone inside of it. Yeah. That's a close-up of kidney. You can kind of see how sharp the edges are. Yeah. Just how painful that might be to try and pass. All right, so to wrap up today, the last thing is what happens if your kidneys fail on you for whatever reason? Um, you have a couple options. One is... Dialysis. It's what you're seeing here is a, a hospital with a dialysis machine. Um, and essentially the dialysis machine acts almost like an artificial kidney. And what you do is you go in, go in you sit down, and they hook your uh, arms up to this machine. One, um, one, I guess, tube takes the blood away from your body into the machine. The machine filters it, removes the wastes and then returns it through another tube back into your arm. Almost like an artificial renal artery and renal vein, mm -hmm. almost. Yeah. It's almost like you have a kidney outside of your body. That's a yeah. machine. And depending on um, how severe the issue is, you may have to go more times than mm -hmm. not. One of my college jobs, actually, was I was driving around um, patients to their dialysis appointments. I remember that was one of my summer jobs in college. And it was, it was really fascinating because I got to learn about what it was. And there were people who had to go really often. There were people who only had to go a couple times a week. So, like I said, it really depends on severity. Yeah. I think they also have traveling dialysis vans, right? That, they, that some people will, can be delivered, like go to your house and stuff okay. like that. And then, you know, ultimately, if you're doing dialysis, I think the goal eventually is ideally to get a kidney transplant so that you don't have to do dialysis for the rest of your life. Um, so if you find the right donor, you can get a kidney transplant. And they basically just literally remove, surgically remove the kidney from one individual and then hook it up to the, the receiving individual and reconnect the arteries in the veins and connect the ureter to the bladder um, to make sure everything's functioning correctly. So it's getting blood, filtering it, creating urine, and then returning the filtered blood back into the bloodstream. Um, so, yeah, that's a kidney transplant. Right. So that's a good lecture. That was pretty pretty good. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed. So that's the end. Yeah. So you wanna do a little cheers? Let's do a little cheers. A little cheers. Hey. To to a video lecture. Awesome lecture. Thank you. Mmm. Right. Yummy. Yummy. See you guys in class. <laughs>